Today we're talking about the Pen EE2, which is possibly one of my favorite cameras of all time. <laughs> this cost me a dollar. If you're a beginner film shooter, uh, or maybe a bit more experienced, this camera, don't overlook it because it's a beauty. Today I want to talk about the specifications of this camera. We're going to have a look at some pictures that I've taken with it, and I'm going to tell you why I love it so much. So um, let's get into it. This camera was released in 1968. It's a half frame camera, uh, which basically means that it takes two frames for every single frame a normal 35mm camera would take. So on a normal roll, say, of 36 exposures, uh, this camera will give you 72 pictures. It's got a 28mm lens, f3.5, two modes of shooting. There's automatic mode, which is what I call ASA mode, which is where you set your film speed and the camera does the rest. And if you have insufficient light, the shutter won't fire have a little red flag comes up in the in the viewfinder that tells you this insufficient light. If that happens and you want to override the automatic mode, you can flick it into aperture priority mode, set your aperture, and you can take a picture in any light that you want. It has a selenium meter on the front of it. Olympus called that in their manual the electric eye, and that selenium meter basically meters for you. It's a system that doesn't need a battery, so one of the other great things about this camera is that you need no batteries. However, one thing to remember if you're buying one of these, there is a limited life expectancy on these meters. I don't know what it is because this camera here I've had no problems with, uh, so they seem to age pretty well. But be aware that you know some of these cameras may have problems. If you are buying one of these, make sure when you're not using it, you cover that lens up, put a cap on it, or keep it in your camera bag. Focal length on this camera is 12 to 15 feet, which is about three and a half to four and a half meters. There is no focusing on this camera. It basically is just a point and shoot, like it says. You just point this camera and you shoot it. So when you're shooting the camera, it does pay to keep that in the back of your mind. You know, keep your subject about three and a half to four meters away for the best focusing. Also has a flash mode. I don't use flash on this, but you can hook a flash onto this and you can put it in flash mode. Uh, like I say, I don't use flash a lot, so I've never used that. But if you're a flash user, just be aware that you can use a flash with this camera. Default mode on this camera is, is portrait. So when you're shooting like this, uh, that's going to produce an image that is in portrait orientation. Uh, if you want to shoot landscape, you basically turn it the opposite way that you would a normal camera and you shoot this way and that gives you landscape. I love the fact that it's in portrait mode as a default because I get some really nice pictures in portrait mode, something a bit different. It's not the same stock standard landscape orientation and you just end up with a bit more of an arty look I guess to your images. Before I carry on, if you'd like to support my channel, you can do so by buying one of my books. I have two books available at the moment. I have Scenes from the Black Sand, which is a physical book. Uh, it's about my photography when I lived in Auckland in and around the Black Sand beaches, the west coast of Auckland. Scenes from the Black Sand is available for 25 US dollars. That includes free shipping anywhere in the world. I also have an ebook available, Emscapes, which is about my digital Leica photography. I'll put a link up here, right here for those. Um, that'll take you to my shop and you can purchase either one of those books. Uh, also go and follow me on Instagram. Please subscribe to this channel, share this video if you can, hit the subscribe button. This all helps me out. If you're enjoying the content, it's a way of helping me and giving back to me. I appreciate it. One of the reasons why this camera holds a special place in my heart is my daughter bought it for me for Christmas a few years back. She paid one dollar for it. Um, it's a beautiful looking little camera, but when I shot my first roll of film with this camera, I was just quite blown away with the actual quality of the images. Shocked, I guess. Shocked, surprised in a pleasant way. So was, not only was it a nice little camera that I got for my daughter, but also it's, um, it takes great pictures. For me, this is the perfect camera for street photography. Um, I love using it for street photography. It's so quick, it's so discreet. The fact that it's a point and shoot and all that you've got to think about is composing is the best. You just, you know, you can literally take a shot in seconds and people don't even know you've taken pictures. So for street photography, for me, this is the ideal tool for that. Like all Olympus cameras, I find that the lens system is really good on them. Uh, Mzuiko lenses are top notch and that flows through to the modern cameras today. So, um, you know, Olympus cameras get overlooked a lot and if you follow this channel a bit, you'll know I'm a bit of an Olympus fan uh, and I really rate my Olympus cameras. I really rate them highly and this one is no different. It's a fantastic little shooter. I've used this on my Looking for New Zealand project and it also features in my new book, Incidents of Isolation. So, you know, if you're worried about printing from this camera, don't be. And because it's half frame, don't be worried about getting slightly bigger prints from it. I had a trip to Australia a few years ago and I got some nice big prints from this camera. So the fact that it's small, it's compact, it's half frame, 
doesn't mean that you can't get some nice prints from it. Uh, great camera for beginner photographers, people getting into film photography for the first time. It's an awesome buy. This camera, like I said, only costs a dollar. They have gone up in price a bit, I think, over the last few years, but you can still pick up a camera like this for probably in and around, you know, 80 to 100 US dollars if you look around. So to wrap up, great little camera. If you're looking at buying one of these, I can't recommend them highly enough. If you're a new shooter, a new film shooter, or a beginner, this is the camera for you. It's a great way to get into photography, into film photography. You know, or if you're a bit like me, you've been shooting for a bit longer, they make for a great addition to your collection of cameras. Um, I wouldn't be without this, and it'd be one of the last cameras I'd get rid of. I think it's just that good. So uh, that's the Pen EE2, uh, one of my favorites. One dollar, believe it or not, this camera costs one dollar. Uh, that's all for this episode. You take care. Uh, I'll see you again soon. Hari from New Zealand. Goodbye.